What's up, internet? The reason why I'm making this is because not a day goes by that I don't receive a message, somebody asking me, how much does it cost to live in Slovenia? And also, I really want to move there. Can you help me get a visa? Unfortunately, I am not an embassy or equipped to give you any legal advice, but I can tell you about the living costs since I've lived here most of my life. I was born and raised here. So in this video, you're gonna find out about the living costs in Slovenia and much more. Seriously, like so much more. There's like, there's like five pages of, five pages of things. Let's start with the one that is most frequently asked, uh, which is rent. Obviously, as any country goes, uh, some places will have more expensive rent. The locations usually where rent spikes up like crazy and it's been going up for the past few years are the capital city, which is Ljubljana, and near coastal side. Outside of that, the average rent in Slovenia would be 300 euros for an apartment that is 40 square meters and about 400 euros for apartments that are 70 square meters. Now, obviously, that is just an average. You might be paying more, you might be paying less. I'm trying to just like, you know, generalize things. Of course, the prices are extremely different in the capital city and they are anywhere between 500 euros for 40 square meters to 700 euros for 50 square meters and anything over that is 800 euros, 900 euros, you know, it's up there. It's There's a big, big gap. That might not sound a lot uh, to people from other countries. So I want to point out that the average paycheck in Slovenia is 1200 euros. So when it comes to utilities, I want to give you somewhat of a fair breakdown but then again there are a lot of different providers of all of those things so like i have said the prices just vary for electricity you will pay about 25 euros per month the disposal of the garbage is on average 15 euros per month and that usually varies depending on if you live in a house how many people are in the household if you live in an apartment building and then we have something called RTV. RTV Slovenia stands for Radio Television Slovenia. And it's kind of a main provider of uh, TV, I guess, um, you know, local, national TV, Slovenian movies. And it's mandatory. You absolutely have to pay that if you have TV. I'm sure that there are ways not to pay for it. I can already hear the comments. Hey, I'm not paying that and then I have 120 programs. But like I have said, you need to relax, sir. That would be 12 euros per month. Gas, um, as in warming up the apartment. That depends on the time of the year you are in. So on average is 50 euros per month in the warmer months. And then when you have to turn on radiators and you need to like, you know, make sure you don't freeze to death, then it's about 100 to 150 euros. Once again, depends on the square meters you have and the age of radiators and how often you turn them on, you know, depends on a lot of things. Internet is usually 20 to 30 euros per month, depends on who you go to. And water, you also pay 15 to 20 euros per month. That, once again, it depends on how much you use it. And also if you have pets, that's also extra. I think it's about two euros in the capital city per pet per month. Those are the basic utilities that you just simply cannot get out of. So those are the ones that I covered. So now if we briefly return to rent before moving to transportation costs, obviously if you go way outside of capital city, or any bigger cities, you can find a decent house that is 150 square meters and it will be like 300 euros per month, you know? But then again, public transit over here is, if you live in the middle of nowhere, it's, it's hard to get anywhere if you don't have a car. Most people that live outside of the city drive to work in the city. I don't think 
there is a point in me covering fuel prices because they went down due to Crayola 19. So they went, you know, from one euro and 30 cents per liter to one euro. We don't have Uber, we don't have Lyft, we don't have anything like that. We have only taxis and they are way too expensive. We have something called Prevozi, which is pretty much a website where, for example, if I am going to go to capital city, I can pick up people and they can pay me three euros, four euros, depends on how much you want to charge. And then I will drop them off wherever it's suitable for me you know we don't have trams metros we only have the your average railroad and it's insanely outdated i swear to god some of those trains are over a few decades old usually the bus is faster which is insane if you go from capital city to maribor you have to transfer two times it takes a little bit under three hours it costs about nine euros and 60 cents now with the bus it's a little under two hours uh, there's no transfers it costs about 11 euros and 40 cents and by car is one hour and 20 minutes you know so as much as Slovenia is trying to be eco-friendly and try to get a lot of people to use public transit it's a bit of a hassle if you have to commute to work you know uh, you're not gonna spend three hours to work and three hours back another thing that was a little bit inconvenient was also that for the longest we didn't have any payment systems you could buy a ticket at the train stop if it was open but if it was opened and you didn't pay it at the train stop, you had to pay extra two euros if you bought it at the train while it was already moving. So they only took cash, no cards accepted. Of course, that changed with the Gorgonzola 19. They did implement a payment system and now they have those little scanners and it's a little bit easier. However, the buses are still like weird when it comes to that. You actually have to print out a ticket after you buy it online. Because most of the bus drivers just don't know what to do with the ticket. Their buses are not equipped with proper scanners. I, at some point, was even almost denied a ride because he was like, I, I, don't, know, I don't know what to do with this. And I was like, yeah, but, but I bought it. Like, you need to let me go on the bus. And so I think there was just so many issues that they implemented this rule that you need to print out a ticket, which is so inconvenient. If you don't have a printer, if you go with the bus like every day, if you are a tourist. So yeah, we're a little bit behind time when it comes to a lot of things. There are also local buses you know, in different cities that cost anywhere between one euro to three. Some of them do take cash, but some of them you have to pay with the phone. Be aware that if you visit Capital City, you cannot pay via cash on local buses anymore. You need to get a tap card, which is called Urbana, and then you get also other discounts. So just make sure that if you visit Capital City, you go to one of those green machines and it's super easy. You can, it prints out the ticket right away. I mean, the tap card, you can reload it right away and instantly you're good to go. Just don't forget to do that. All right, <laughs> I think we covered transportation now. I'm gonna move on to food. So when it comes to food, we have a few main stores that the majority shops in, which I'm pretty sure is similar to a lot of other countries. We have Spar. Mercator, Lidl, Hofer, and then also Eurospin, Eleclerc, Tusch. Hofer is actually Aldi. Also, Slovenia is very big on farmers markets. At least the ones that I know like to buy produce at one of those farmers markets. It's a, a way to support local farms. If you buy seasonal vegetables and fruits, like for example, you would buy berries in the summer and you would buy potatoes and pumpkins in the fall. And, you know, in the winter you have cabbage and you have apples and pears and stuff like that. Then you can save up a lot of money. Because for example, this is the receipt where I bought pretty much enough food to fill up a fridge for two people. And the total was uh, under 50 euros, which is 
for a person who lived in California for five years, uh, that's, it's fucking heaven. So now that I covered food, let's move on to fun stuff, which will be also restaurants and bars. When it comes to beer, I already mentioned in one of my previous videos that the main breweries in Slovenia are Lashko and Union, obviously bought by Heineken in 2016. So these are the ones that most bars will offer. The prices will be between two euros for a half a liter to four euros, depends on what you're drinking. Craft beer, obviously, is uh, a lot more expensive. It can go up to eight euros per beer or even more if you buy beer in a store. Lashko and Union will obviously be a lot cheaper than craft brewery. Same goes for food when it comes to restaurants. Obviously, depends on where you're going. Um, I'm not gonna get too much into this topic because I'm actually working on a separate video comparing costs of restaurants and bars around Slovenia. Otherwise, this one will be seven hours long. So let's just move on to uh, yeah clubbing cannot tell you much about that i haven't stepped foot in a club in seven years we do have concerts especially in ljubljana and other cities actually outdoor concerts are really popular here and a lot of them are for free so which is really nice there's always some sort of live music or maybe they're like two or three euros and you can get a lot of like good cultural stuff going on in slovenia if you just like you know ask around or google a little bit cinema tickets will cost you seven euros and about five euros for the smaller cinemas that usually offer you know a, a bigger variety of of movies not just like hollywood blockbusters if you're staying in a hotel for example let's say in december the prices will depend on your destination if it's a place that is not known for tourism it can be you know 30 euros per night but on average it's 50 because it's december and then in ljubljana in the capital city it would be 70 to 100 euros per night obviously it can be 200 or 300 or 600 and then the coastal side would be 100 euros per night i also did a separate video on what 50 euros per night will get you in capital city you can check that one out uh, we'll leave it down below or like there will be some sort of a Thing that will pop out and you can click on that now let's move on to education education in slovenia is free of charge for for all the public schools and most people like 90 percent of people go to public schools obviously if you go to private schools you pay money and if you're at a university you can take the same test three times for free but then fourth time and each additional time you have to pay for it. So they kind of force you to just like, you know, get your shit together and get get out of there as soon as possible. We do have also scholarships. There are a few of them. I'm not gonna get too much into details, but let's say the government offers a scholarship. You can get 35 euros and then ages 18 and over 71 euros, 72. And then obviously, if you are dirt poor, that is 97 euros and 194. What they also do is they kind of reward you each year. The better you do in school, like more money you can get, maybe like 5 to 10 euros per month more. But if you don't pass the year, you have to return the entire scholarship at the end of the year. Despite all that, most people still work. Most students work. Pretty much everybody that I know worked during student time. Because like I have said, most of the good universities and schools are in the capital city or in bigger cities. So rent and food, they cost money. We have work separated. We, we have work where you get a contract usually that's for a year and then you have student work you get paid hourly you made a lot less money as a student as you were if you were permanently employed we did have another benefit as students you got discount on food they're called studentski boni which is a kind of student vouchers you get, you know, main course and also you get a tiny salad and sometimes you get a dessert. You only paid 
one euro and 20 cents compared to five or six that would usually cost you. I think I covered most of the educational costs. Now we're moving on to health insurance, which is mandatory, at least 25 euros per month for basic insurance. And if you want to add anything a little bit extra, so you know, you're covered for higher prices and blah, 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 blah. That will cost you 55 euros per month. If you want to go higher, you can go higher, but that's usually the common amount. When it comes to health care over here, most prescription drugs are for free or you pay a symbolic price. We don't have a lot of off-the-counter pills available. That actually surprised me in America how accessible pharmaceuticals you can just buy them at CVS or Walgreens and you cannot buy them in Slovenia and when it comes to visits to the doctors they are free of charge sometimes the waiting lines are uh, pretty hectic if you need surgery it can be up to a year of waiting now I want to move on to retirement briefly but I do know that it's a big big topic in Slovenia because the amount of pension is just ridiculously small. The age when you can retire is 60 to 65 years and you need to have 40 years of pensionable service. The average pension right now is 650 euros compared to, for example, our neighbors, Austria, they have 1200 euros per month. And also, this is just an average. I know plenty of uh, retired people who receive 350 or less because they have some sort of ownership in a forest or you know some square meters of a forest even if it is it's still a bizarrely small small amount so yeah that's as much as i want to say on this topic and with this i actually conclude all the topics that i wanted to touch upon in this video if you want me to dive deeper in any of them, let me know in the comments down below. Like I have said, I'm diving deeper into bar and restaurant costs. But if you want me to dig a little deeper and bring you more information about other things, maybe like tourism or, you know, whatever, um, I'll do, do that to my best abilities. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up so I know that I am not doing this for you know, for, for shits and giggles, which I am, but you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, don't forget to buy my merch. This is my stay awesome, stay positive shirt. I have a bunch of others as well. I'll leave the link in the description box and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And that will be it. Stay awesome, stay positive. I love you all and I'll see you in the next video.